welcome back to science with us. We are going to be making some paper circuits all summer long and I'm so excited that you guys are here with us to join us today. So today, yesterday we made our van and we have a couple other paper circuits coming up later on this week, but today we are making a house to make ourselves a little home. So I'm going to go over what we need to make that happen and all of the supplies you need and we'll get to our shout outs and all that fun stuff. And I do want to give a shout out because yesterday, Naomi and Ellie and Kaya were all on in Zoom and we were thinking, what do we want to do next week? And we're going to make some LED jewelry. Some paper circuit jewelry is on the docket for next week. So I'm super excited. Maybe it will be like your Marvel rings of like power or maybe it'll be like a princess ring. Who knows? It can be what you want. But just know that that's coming out. We're going to do rings and bracelets some headbands, we got some cool stuff coming for that. So I'm super excited. All right, so for today though, as we do our Circuit City, the things we need, you need your PDF printout. And again, I like to print this on thicker paper. So it's a cardstock paper and it gives your projects like a lot of strength so they don't fall apart so quickly. It lets you play with them and it makes the paper circuits work a lot better in these situations. But regular paper is okay, right? Regular paper is totally okay. It just, you're gonna have a little bit more tricky time like bending it and taping it in place, and then they might, you know, sort of crunch up a lot easier. Um, but I do highly recommend getting the cardstock paper because that is really, really helpful. The other things that you will need are some LEDs, whatever colors that you want to light up your house. You'll need some conductive tape. Copper tape is what we use here, and that you can get at a garden store, you can get it online. It's just a metal tape, so it's metal on one side and then sticky on the other. You need something to power our circuit. So our energy source is these little coin cell batteries and we use CR2032 batteries. You can get those at grocery stores everywhere. Online is way better. You need to make sure if you don't get a 2032 that it's three volts. All right, so you want a three volt battery, not something that's like one and a half volts and it might look like it's the same size and only be one and a half volts. So you do wanna check that. Um, it'll be on the packaging or it'll be inscribed on the surface of the battery. We need a pair of scissors so that we can cut things out. And then you need some sort of non-conductive tape. So I'm using masking tape so you guys can see where I put the tape, but you can use invisible tape, clear tape if you want to and you want your circuits to not be seen like that. And then today I am gonna show you guys a trick and I'll probably show this like every week with foil for if something happens to your circuit. You don't actually need it for the project, but it's just, uh, my circuit broke and I'm gonna show you a trick on how to get around those corners if you keep breaking in the corners. All right, so let's see who we have here today. All right, so we have Miss, Miss. Frankie and Iris. Oh, hello Frankie and Iris, I'm so glad you ladies are back. I hope you come for jewelry week. It's going to be fun. They are hanging out on Zoom with me, and yes. Zoom is open if anybody wants to come hang out. Zoom is open, so that's a great reminder. If you want your kids off of YouTube or Facebook and into something that's a little bit more controlled, we are on Zoom. You get into our Zoom room with a password by supporting us on patreon.com slash Research. But of course, we're also free and live on YouTube every day, 9 a.m. in the summer. We'll so see what fun. we do in the school year. So much fun. Uh, we've also got, oh, Ooh. John and company say they're Ooh. not going to be here, oh, but they did stop them. by to say hi, so that's good. Yay, well, hi, John and company, if you come back later on, we hello. Still, we still want to see you. And I'm also sad I won't get to see you in Zoom after class. True. <laughs> we got Naomi in the house. Hello, Naomi! Yay! Naomi, I'm so glad she's coming. She helped us think of things. Oh, yeah. They're definitely going to be here. Mm -hmm. And then we've also got Kyle back again. Yay! Hi, Kyle! I love having Kaya. You know, I'm thinking our 9 a.m. classes are a little early for kids in the summer. Apparently. Apparently. We, but, but we have the hardcore That's ones. okay. Yeah, and I'm going to say hello to Rohan and Vinatia because I know they are at camps right now. So I want to say my big hello for when you guys come back and you try our paper circuit projects. We're still thinking about you even though you're not with us right now. And if you do them later and you want to shout out, just send us an email yeah. and we will shout out. We, will let, we like to say hello to people and make everybody feel special. That's really important. All right, All right. Ready? let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do with all of our paper circuits is we cut out around the thick black lines right here. It's just like one big thing today. And then we're going to fold on the gray dotted lines. All right, so that's always our first step. 
We're going to cut out on the thick black lines and fold on the gray dotted lines. And sometimes if I want a really good cut, I can come in from a different angle. So if you're having trouble getting like your cuts really nice, that's something that you can do. You can come in from a different angle and you can do something like that. Or another thing, see I overcut right here and then I can cut in a little bit easier. So you can overcut in some places. You can turn the paper all the way over and come in from a different direction. Cutting is not as straightforward as what it, we might think it is. Sometimes we can think of it really creatively and come in at all different places to make our cuts look really good at the end. Because sometimes they can be tricky. Now, I am excited to see what you guys do to, for your home. I made mine blue with a red door because that blue is my favorite color. I love that color. And for some reason, I think having a red door in a house would be super cool. I like really like that idea. I don't know where the red, I'm sure there's a history behind like red doors on houses, but I don't know what it is. All right, today's project is a nice simple cut, which is very handy. I'm gonna come in from down here. And you guys, if you find, oh man, Dr. Erica cuts way too fast, you guys can always come to class with it pre-cut out. That's always an option. We're always cutting on the dark. We are always cutting on the dark black lines or around them. You can see mine is not perfect and yours doesn't need to be perfect either because perfection can be a killer of all fun things. So now we are going to bend on these um, gray dotted lines and we always bend into the circuit. I think we have a question now. Frankie is saying that they're going to have two blue doors or that they Ooh. have two blue doors in their house. Ooh, cool. that is cool. I like to when I bend, oh my gosh, two blue doors, I really like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we always bend into our circuit, and I like to sort of press my fingernails along that line so that I can help it fold into a really nice spot. And I like to crease it really good because our house is going to stand up. And if we fold it all now, we don't have to worry about breaking our circuit later. Or like as we're doing this, popping out the LED over here, we don't have to think about any of that it's sort of already done for us and that's really handy so I'm gonna fold this guy up and this piece just is gonna fold all the way up around the house so we're gonna fold it again that's gonna be like the tip of the house right there and again it doesn't have to be perfect my friends if you don't get it right on the dotted lines that's okay do the best you can the more that we practice together the better we're all gonna get Right, and the sooner you start practicing, the sooner you get better. Nobody becomes an expert overnight. We all have to work really hard for our skills. And that comes through a lot of like trial and error, or maybe sometimes it folding it and it not working. And that's okay. And then the last fold I have here is gonna be the fold that comes up and over the battery. So it just folds there. And note that the battery piece actually sticks out from my house. So right here, it kind of sticks out right there. So it's sticking out. And now we are going to wire it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tape it to my Curious George book. Just like that, so you guys can see really nicely. I'm gonna wire the yellow one first. And notice that there's that bend in the yellow one, which can be a really tricky spot. And if you've been with us before, you'll know we never wanna rip it at the bins, we always want to fold it, okay? And that's because those two highways, if we rip it, are above each other and the electrons can't get from one highway to the other. There's no sort of off ramp going from one side to the other. So they can't get there and it breaks our circuit. We do have to bend it, but I'm gonna show you a trick. In fact, I'm gonna do it right now. Let's say you worked really hard getting this whole part of the copper tape down and you're like trying to bend it and you're like oh I can't do it and then it broke that happens to a lot of kids that's like totally normal you don't have to be super upset it's gonna be totally okay you can either start over which is what I usually say unless it's a really complicated thing or here's another trick let's say we do exactly what I've been telling you not to do you like might be like Dr. Erica wait a second 
seriously, the past 15 weeks you've told me not to do this. And you're still right. But what you could do if you're in a situation like that where the bend, you just, you've worked so hard, you can't quite get that one little piece and you're really frustrated, everything else is getting wired up. What you can do is you can take a little piece of foil. Now I know that this actually works better with foil than it does with the copper tape and I think that's just the paper backing sort of maybe bends it funny, I'm not sure. But if you fold it up and scrunch it and you put it over the top of the bend, just like that, that gives us a highway off ramp. And then I can tape it. So wherever it rips, you could fold a little piece of foil and then you can tape it, okay? So if you're finding you have trouble doing that, you could do that. You could tape your pieces and then tape a little piece of foil over the top. It has to touch both pieces. So it has to touch this line and that line. And I want it to be really pressed down pretty good. And I can just tape that down. And that will fix it for the most part. All right, so that's just a fun little clever trick that you can use in all of your paper circuits um, when you find that you're having a lot of trouble getting around some bins. And we're gonna talk about that on Thursday also because Thursday, we are making a um, stoplight, which has lots of little bins in the circuit, and you've got to do a lot of wiring, and it might be really frustrating if on some of those they accidentally rip. So we'll talk about that again. I'm also going to put a piece of tape over right here because my battery is going to go in this green circle. And this wire, I want to touch the top of the battery, but not the bottom. And if you notice, when I put this in right now, that would touch the bottom here and it would touch the top also. That's not very helpful because then the electrons have sort of this really fast path from the top to the bottom and they're super lazy. They're never going to do more work than they need. So they won't choose to go all the way up over here like this. They'll just choose to do that. So what we're going to do to prevent that is we're going to put a little piece of tape right over the top of this wire where it would have hit the bottom of the battery. So now the battery touches my masking tape or maybe your scotch tape or electrical tape instead of touching this wire. So Dr. Eric, this is a really important part. Yes, this, if you don't do this one little piece right here, this will break your circuit. I'm gonna grab a pen. I'm going to highlight it for you guys. We really need tape right here. So if you're working really hard on cutting or taping right now, take a second yeah. to look at what Dr. Eric is doing so that you don't you mess this really, up You really, really want tape right there to cover up the piece of wire that goes to the top but would otherwise also touch the bottom all right so you want tape right there it needs to cover the whole area of this green circle so don't just put a tiny piece of tape like right in the middle you want to make sure you give yourself some space yeah all right and then the next one that we're going to do is we are going to wire in this guy all right and so we're going to wire along this and notice that these two wires don't touch now my friends who've been here for a long time will know that that's because again, if we touch, the electrons can go from one wire to the other with skipping the LED. And they don't like to have to go through those LEDs. I don't know why, because they always slide down, have fun and make beautiful light, but they won't. They'll always choose to be extra lazy. So we wanna make sure that lines that don't touch on our templates don't touch when we put copper tape down. And this one's nice, it's like just straight. A straight piece of copper tape. And, oh, you notice mine's getting a little bit closer. But I can sort of bend it down and just press it down where I'd like it to be. So I did make sure that these two don't touch. That's really important. Just like that. So the other things that we have left is to put our battery here and to put our LED right up here. We're going to put our battery in first. And we are going to tape around the edges of the battery. I'm actually just going to cut this little piece of tape in half again. You don't need a lot of tape to put your battery in. All right, I do need to leave the top of my battery open because that's what's going to touch here. Right? I need this piece of copper tape here when it folds over to touch the top. So if I tape over the top, that's not going to happen. But I can tape sort of along the sides. And look at how little of my battery is actually being covered up when I do this. It's a very small amount. And I like to really push the tape in. 
So I'm using just a tiny amount that covers up the battery. And that's really important. I don't want to um, tape right over the top. I want to give as much of the metal of the battery for this piece to touch when I want my light to turn on. All right, so we have our battery taped in. And again, a big metal piece that came that is still open. And also don't forget, we've got the tape that's on this long leg wire underneath the battery. So where that sort of tealish blue is at. That's a really important piece. Now we get to decide what kind of light we have. Some of you guys have rainbow LED lights, which are amazing. And maybe you have a disco house. I would kind of love that. My rainbow LEDs haven't found them recently, but we're going to do a white light because I think when I was like at home cooking and doing stuff, it might be hard to do that to a disco. So I'm going to just use a regular white light, but I don't know. You guys should be more creative than me. I think a disco light would be cool. Or maybe you love like blue lights and you were, or you were like, I'm going to have light by fire monster and you're going to have yellow light. All right. Our LEDs have two legs. Whoop. Hang on. They have two legs. I'm going to try to hold my LED up. One leg is a little bit shorter and one leg is a little bit longer. And we want to put the short leg on the wire that says short leg and the long leg on this wire here that says long leg. That's the wire that we had to put a little piece of tape over and bent. All right. If we put it the wrong way, then the LED won't light up because LEDs are one way streets. Those electrons go down the slide. They're such good rule followers. They never go up the slide. And I'm just going to tape these legs in. I can tape them both in with the same piece of tape. So I could just take this piece of tape and tape it right across both legs. I need to make sure that the legs are touching the copper tape, their respective lines of copper tape. So I can just do like that. I like to press really hard and then I can press on my battery and my LED works. And you'll notice it works even though I had that rip in my copper tape. And that's because I put that foil in there. All right. So if you have a rip in your copper tape, you can always do like a little foil jumper. I call those little jumpers. And there we go. So now all we have left to do is to fold it up and decorate. Um, oh, real quick though, a couple things that might go wrong is maybe yours doesn't work and you're like, Dr. Erica, I did everything you said and mine doesn't work. Maybe you need to flip your legs. So if I were to take this out, and show you what happens when we flip our LED over. I'll just flip that LED over and switch where those legs are. Just like that. Everything else in my circuit is the same. The wiring is the same. The battery is the same. We know this part works. My LED won't light up. So whenever I have a circuit that doesn't light up, that's like the first thing I check. Are my legs on the right spot? And you can do that by again just flipping over your LED and checking to see if that works. Now, if you're positive, you're hundred percent positive that your legs are in the right spot, then you'll know that, Oh, flipping it definitely won't help. There we go. So sometimes it could be like maybe the wire underneath the battery got taped over also by accident. And then the battery is not touching this because the battery metal has to touch the bottom wire that goes through the LED. And then it has to touch the top wire in the top for it to light up. Those are some common problems you might run into. All right. So now we just have to fold up this little guy and to fold it up. We just fold up these pieces of the house like this. All right. And then we, this guy just sort of rolls over the top of our house like that. So again, it looks like this. We're going to fold fold the sides of the house up to hide the circuit. All right. We always want to have the circuit on the inside, which makes it nice and strong. And then this piece that we've already folded just rolls up like that. And then we can double check that our circuit still works. And usually it will because we've already bent all of the things we needed to bend. So we didn't have to mess with the paper too much. Now I think in terms of decorating, it's probably easier to decorate it on your table like this without it being sort of folded up. This seems really hard to decorate, whereas this feels really easy. And then things to remember when you're decorating is like, look at where it folds up 
These two are the sides. So these two pieces here are gonna be the sides of your house. Maybe you want some flower planter boxes or a nice little gate on the side of your house. And then if we look again, these two in the middle, these two are the roof. So if you wanna add in a chimney or some roofing or some skylights, this would be the spot that you would do it. And you can always check that by just rolling it up and saying, oh, where do these pieces meet? And what I like to do as I'm learning about how things roll up and unfold in space, which is a really good skill, is sometimes I'll be like, okay, I think this one is the roof. Sometimes I'll write it on there in pencil. Sometimes I'll hold it. This is the one I want to do. And sometimes I'll even be like, ooh, I wanna make sure this part's the top. So I'm gonna hold it up here, that's the top. I'm gonna to place it on my paper and I'm gonna draw according to that. And that's a skill, the more you practice sort of rolling and unfolding and things, you'll get really good at that and that will help you later in life thinking through problems. Um, and then also you, I cut out some fun little windows and poked a few little holes. You could have your house just light up like this or you could have it have some windows. That's sort of up to you. Um, but I would do that when it's flat. It's gonna be really hard to do when it's rolled up into a box. And then once you're all ready, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape it in place. So I'm gonna use my masking tape so you can see where I tape it. And then I'll show you how I just tape it in place. And there's a couple tricks. One of them is that I always put half the tape on the part that I'm about to tape, like this. And I can just, that's really easy to do. And then I can fold up that corner just like that, so I can fold up the corner, I can align the pieces of paper, and then just roll that piece of tape over. And I can do that on the other side too. So I can take this piece of tape, I can put it just half on here, just like that, and then I can fold this piece up to the paper, and then all I have to do is press that around. And you could get in there and press it really tightly, or maybe it doesn't bother you, sort of depends, you can also sort of pinch around that corner to put the tape down. And then we're gonna tape on the roof and the other wall and then we'll be all done. We'll have our fully made house. So I'm gonna take a little piece and you don't need a ton of tape to be honest. It just depends how you want your seams to look. I always suggest decorating before taping because the tape takes the ink of like markers and crayon or the wax of crayons a little differently. So you want to be careful. If they decorate before, they probably want to use clear tape, right? Yes, and if you decorate before, you want to use clear tape because then you don't have a house that looks beautiful with a bunch of like random tape pieces. It's fine if you do. I mean, honestly, you guys are working so hard on these projects. I think they will look amazing no matter what you do. You might have, maybe, could you hot glue the edges? You could hot glue the edges for sure. I'm a big fan of hot glue. I'm just trying to really stick to our super simple supply list right now. That's like a really big goal of mine to make sure that everybody has access and ability to do this. So again, I'm just putting tape on this little piece right here, folding it down and folding that tape over. And they might not line up perfectly. You notice I have a little gap. I'm not gonna worry about that because when I've worked so hard on a project, I can say, you know what, I did a really good job on this and maybe it's not perfect. Guess what? Nothing's perfect. Nothing is ever perfect. So that can be a hard thing to learn. And then this guy, we're gonna actually just put in just like that. It's kind of handy if you're, this little tape, paper flap gets put under that because it just keeps it. But if not, no big deal. And then you're gonna put tape on these sides so that everything can get held together. Now these last ones are the hardest ones because you can't really press the way that you want to press. But you can just fold them around and really gently, try to gently put it all on and together. Just like that. And then I have my fun little guy. When I press here, it stays on. And when I let go, it goes off. Now if you want something to keep it always on, you could take a clip these are sewing clips. You could use a binder clip. That would all be fine. And you can clip it over that. So when you're playing with it, you can set up your fun little circuit city. You can turn everything on. And then when you want to stop playing with it, you can put it in your shoebox and take these off so that you don't have to replace those batteries as much. Because the batteries will run out. And you do want to make sure that you can turn things off. 
But you could use a binder clip, a paper clip. Um, we've used little little magnets across one on top and one on bottom, and that sometimes works if you like that idea. Hair pins. Um, hair pins. Pin. Yeah, bobby pins will work. Paper clips often work. So there's a lot of options that you can use to clip that there to be always on, and then you can unclip it to be off when you're ready. So that is our house. It will turn out looking like that little guy. And you can move in with your red door, or maybe you want an orange door, or maybe you've got blue doors. Who knows? You can then park your car at your house. We have big cars, or maybe really little houses. I don't know. We'll have to choose which one it's going to be. And then tomorrow we'll make a place that we can go and have some delicious dim sum, or go to work at, or maybe go work out at. We could have a fun little city building. And then, of course, if we're driving in the city, we're going to need to know how to make sure traffic doesn't get crashed. So we're going to make a stoplight on our last, or not on our last day, on Thursday. And then Friday we'll make some city characters that we can decorate and celebrate with as well. I see Naomi's already blinking in Zoom. Yay! Awesome! Rainbow style. Well, we are going to head over into Zoom to check out all of the gorgeous projects you guys are making. I want to say thank you so much for joining us in our fun summer of science. We are doing paper circuits all summer long. We will be live every weekday at 9 to 10. And then we will be online all of the time because you can always visit YouTube whenever. If you want to get into our Zoom room or you want to make sure you get all of the templates emailed to you because they're not actually up for sale anywhere at the moment, you will want to check out our Patreon. We are at patreon.com slash rosyresearch and you can support us from as little as a dollar a week and it really helps us continue our programming through the summer and probably through the fall. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you soon and I'll see my friends in Zoom. Bye everybody. Beep, beep.